Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora here on Facebook Live on facebook.com backslash live now DT and on youtube.com backslash wake up call DT. We're here with Dave Paziak, a good friend of mine, someone I appreciate so very much. And he and I got to do an audio version of this, but I thought it would be better to put your mug on video, Mr. Paziak, and celebrate number 300 and counting. So how are you? I'm doing great. I don't know. You might want to rethink that video piece. So, so, <laughs> so, so tell I me, mean, why? And I guess the question is, why don't I have any Linden swagger yet? I guess that's the question. I don't know, man. Wait, waiting for, uh, waiting for that big don donation so we can build the Tortora field house. Yeah, you know, I got, I got to get some swagger. We got the new wake up call stuff going on. I'm very proud of here. So, uh, well, I don't have any of that either. I, I know you don't. We need to do a. Uh, Jersey swap, right? Isn't that how they show respect? Exactly. Exactly. Next so, time we next time we get together for lunch or something. Absolutely. So how is how is life out in Vermont? How are things going for you out there? Yeah, it's I mean it's going good. People are real nice. Um actually just trying to make the shift now because I'm a sports information director here and you know we finished up our last game Sunday and our baseball team is opening up today. So I've been yeah. kind of keeping a half an eye on that game and everything. So um, well, Dave, I, I invited you here to uh, give you a little surprise. It wasn't supposed to just be you and I. So I actually am doing something here that's a, a little bit different. And that is because <laughs> these gentlemen that are here joining us are the people that you gave uh, respect to on your on the show that we got to do together. This is your coaching tree. So Dave, this was actually always meant to be a surprise. Zach Thompson is with us from SUNY Delhi, as well as Danny Frasina from Brian and Stratton, Syracuse and Justin Stern from Casanova. This is, this is our surprise to you, Mr. Paziak, because these gentlemen wanted to show you some love today. Well, it's great to see these guys. I appreciate you doing this. Uh, caught me by surprise. So did, did um, you have any idea? Absolutely not. Absolutely <laughs> not. So appreciate it. And um, see Zach's two little ones in the picture. They're probably the smartest people on the screen right now. <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool and pretty awesome. I'm going to bring all the, uh, the, the gentlemen on here. So guys, how is, uh, how's everything going at Danny? I'll start with you. Uh, you know, part of this surprise yeah, here for, for coach, uh, how's everything going? It's good. Uh, I just got out of practice a little bit ago. Uh, coach, congratulations again on 300. Um, Dan asked me to reach, you know, reach out and, and do this and without hesitation, you know, I was like, absolutely. I think it'd be a cool idea. And I'm, I'm glad he's got us all together, but yeah, I'm just, you know, hanging in there, getting ready for a game tomorrow. And, you know, I know that your season, I think just wrapped up, but I'm glad that you were able to get some games in and, and have a season yourself. Yeah. I mean, it's great to see that you guys are playing. I know Zach's not playing. Justin's hoping to play one of these days. So. No, he, he he beat us. He beat us, so he got his chance. So, uh, he said if he doesn't get any more games, and he can he can go down as having the first undefeated season in Cass history. <laughs> That's right. One and zero. Glad to be that one. <laughs> I'm putting a banner up too. <laughs> Unde uh, undefeated good. banner. Undefeated season. There I you like go. It. So Zach's so undefeated this year too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what can you say, uh, Justin, I'll, I'll go to you next here. Uh, just what you want to say to coach again, for everybody tuning in, I told Dave Paziak that this video was going to be uh, just him and I doing an extension of our audio show and uh, that we did earlier on wake up call with Dan Tortora. And the whole time it was meant to be a surprise. He mentioned his coaching tree of Justin Stern, Zach Thompson and Danny Frasina and how much these guys mean to him. And so as a way to, pay that back to Dave. They're all on the air with us here today on screen. Justin, what do you want to say to coach? Yeah, I just want to say that, you know, obviously you gave us three our first start in the college basketball ranks as, as players and has have mentored us and given us great advice and through the years and helping us through to get to where our careers are now. And we really appreciate everything you've done for us. And, you know, they say that the, uh, you know, you, you keep saying that, you know, your wins come from the players, but, you know, just remember where your first championship came from too. So that <laughs> me and Zach had something to do with that. Um, That's true. You know, but, 
but really, we, we appreciate everything you've done for us and continue to do for us today. And we wouldn't be where we are without your your mentorship and leadership that you've shown to us. And we continue to show to our players because of what we learned from you. I appreciate the kind words, Justin. Zach, you know, what, what you can say to coach being a part of this as well, part of Dave Paziak's coaching tree, just what it means to you to be connected with him and, and what you want to tell him today. Yeah. Um, so I would echo a lot of what the other two guys said. Um, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today without you. Um, I, I think I was a part of probably about 80 of those wins um, as either a player or a coach. So uh, you're welcome for some of those, but uh, <laughs> But no, I, in, in all seriousness, um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity you gave me as a player and, and then the opportunity, opportunity you gave me as a, as a coach as well. Um, you know, and, and I definitely wouldn't be a head coach right now if it wasn't for you, because I think probably every job that I've um, gotten along the way, you had a, a big hand in helping me um, to get. So um, look forward to to hopefully getting back on the court and uh, get an opportunity to compete against you again at some point. So, yeah, I'm I'm over against Zach and I'm over against Justin. Haven't played Dan yet. So, like <laughs> I said yesterday, these guys are all going to be better coaches than I ever thought of being. So, I'm over um, against Zach too. So, you know, it seems like a club to be in. <laughs> yeah. So, Zach, what's the uh, what's the deal? Why are you beating up on your old coach and why are you beating up on Justin? <laughs> I don't have an answer for that. I don't know. I don't want to give away any secrets. <laughs> oh, he's undefeated against me as well. So, I mean, he's got all of our numbers, I think. So you got everybody. So you got Danny too, because Danny, I mean, you know, so, so Zach, you legitimately are undefeated to the house here. I have, I don't have a team <laughs> to play you, but the rest of the house you you've taken from. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we got lucky. We just graduated a really, really good group of players. So I don't know if we're going to be able to keep it going. We'll see. You know what that means, though, is that next time the four of us get together, Zach's got the check. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't know about that. Probably Brooks Barbecue. I will say, our, you, you weren't a part of the most exciting game, though. So that's something that Dan and oh, I have to do. Oh, and I was on the losing end of that one as well. So come on, guys. <laughs> I wouldn't have brought it up if, I if we didn't win that game. So <laughs> Yeah, but Dan would have. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, so Dave, you and I got to talk about this coaching tree, the, the mentors that you had and the people that you came from, and then what you tried to do to pay it forward. These guys are on the screen here that you've tried to pay it forward to. I, I'd love to get your thoughts and, and have them, you know, really interact with you here to start with your, your take on Danny Frasina and, and what you want to say about him. Well, Dan's, I mean, Dan is starting a program from scratch at, uh, at Brian and Stratton. And I think he's done a really good job of just, putting them on the map and, you know, making people aware that they've got a program and, um, you know, it's taking them in the right direction. And, uh, you know, Brian and Stratton didn't exist as a basketball program until a couple of years ago. And he's, you know, in, in you know, in four seasons, he's really kind of made them a, a viable entity and taking them to a competitive level. And I think they're going to continue to trend in that direction. And as far as Justin, your thoughts on, on, you know, what he's meant to you and, and what you want to, send back to him after you heard some words from Justin Stern? Yeah, I mean, Justin's doing the same thing at Casanova. I mean, he's got the, got the program at a really competitive level. Um, you know, he's recruiting good kids and, um, you know, building a solid program and, and has Cas, I think, at a point they're coming into our league. So I'm um, looking forward to uh, competing against them on a more regular basis. And I think they will be, um, you know, Cas and, and, and Delhi Zach's team, I think will, you know, will be two teams that are, are gonna be in contention um, you know, going forward in our conference and, um, you know, looking forward to, I'd love to someday, you know, we play an East West championship for to go to the NCAAs and um, hopefully someday, you know, someday soon we get there and hopefully it's against one of those guys. So that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and uh, the guy that's picking up the check next time, what are your thoughts on Zach Thompson? Yeah. I mean, Zach, I mean, Zach, I, I, all three of these guys I knew would be, would be terrific coaches because they're all students in the game, but, you know, Zach was, um, you know, I tell people I don't get big, you know, big headed about this, but he's, you know, he's the, he's the smartest point guard I ever coached um, as far as just commanding the team. And like, you know, he had the makings of, of a great coach at that point. And, uh, you know, he's a student of the game and, a uh, you know, a real basketball junkie as are Justin and Dan. And I think like the work ethic and, the, um, you know, desire to 
um, you know, to keep bettering yourself as a coach. I think that's something that all three of these guys have in common, the students of the game and always trying to look at new ideas and, and, and new ways of doing things and better ways of doing things. And I think that's why all three of them have their, their, their programs tracking in a uh, positive direction. Justin, what's the, the best thing about having Dave Paziak as your coach? Well, it was not, not having to worry about playing him every year, but that's changing now. <laughs> um, the, the, you know, the nice thing about Dave is even when, no matter if you're competing against him, um, you know, he's still a guy that you can bounce things off of and talk to, and he'll always give you genuine advice and genuine, you know, leadership and everything that, you know, even if it doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't help him, he's always willing to go out and do the extra stuff to help the people he cares about. Danny, for you, what would you say? Why, why is Dave Paziak such a good coach? Why did you feel like learning from him was the right place to be? Well, I mean, Dave gave me my first um, chance at playing organized basketball. You know, I got cut all four years at Henniger and tried out for the OCC team. And he told me straight up and, was, and he was very honest with me and told me, like, my position on the team is going to take place more in practice. And if that's something that I wanted to do, um, you know, that's kind of how things were going to be. And, and I respect that honesty. And really, I just wanted a chance to be part of a team and, and to work hard. And, and, you know, he gave me that opportunity. And then later on down the road, um, you know, when I was a volunteer assistant, at a local women's program, he gave me a chance to latch onto his coaching staff up at OCC. And, um, you know, we had stayed in contact through, you know, over the, over the years, OCC summer camps and all that. And, um, you know, obviously to be able to have that opportunity to coach with the guy that gave me the opportunity as a player, I thought would be great. And, you know, we always, he and I debate and we don't always agree on things, but it's, everything starts at a level of respect and, and honesty. And I think, you know, we have a great, not only working relationship, but an awesome friendship as well because of that. Zach, for you, why, why was it good to learn from Dave Paziak? Why was it learned to, why, why was it the right fit for you to take something away from him? Yeah. So um, as a player, um, you know, I went to a pretty small high school, um, didn't get really highly recruited and, and uh, you know, coach Paziak was the coach that showed the most interest in me um, and had a real vision for kind of what he thought I could accomplish um, at Onondaga. And then, uh, and then beyond that, you know, at, at my next school. Um, so I believed in, in what he was telling me and, and what he felt like I could accomplish um, as a player. He gave me a lot of freedom as a player. I, I felt like I would really fit the system that he wanted to play well. Um, you know, and that, that was the best decision I ever made uh, was, to, was to go play at OCC. Um, you know, and, and play for Coach Paziak. And then um, as an assistant coach, um, you know, I was looking for an opportunity to, to start my coaching career. I, I was looking kind of all over the place uh, towards the end of my senior year. And um, Coach Paziak had called me um, pretty close to graduation. I don't remember exactly when it was and offered me an opportunity to come back and, and be an assistant coach. Uh, and it was really a no brainer for me. I pretty much stopped searching for any other jobs because I felt like uh, it would be an opportunity to um, learn from a really good coach who was also a really good friend and, and a great mentor for me. Um, it would give me an opportunity to see things from a different angle um, and to, to learn from him in, a, in kind of a different way. Um, you know, and again, it was another, another great, uh, great opportunity and a great decision um, and a pretty easy decision for me to go ahead and do that. Um, and similar to these other guys, you know, Coach Paziak is somebody who, you know, when you finish up playing for him, um, it, it really just starts there. Like you're, you're going to have, you know, lifelong friendships um, or a lifelong friendship with him. You know, I talk to Coach Paziak all the time, um, every week, uh, sometimes more often than that, you know, about basketball and, and everything else as well. So, um, but yeah, so it's, uh, you know, playing for Coach Paziak and being an assistant with Coach Paziak was, was definitely uh, um, something that really helped me to get to where I am today and, um, you know, helped me become the person that I am today.
Dave, you, you hear from these gentlemen that came from your tree, you know, every coach, you know, I think it's, it's one thing to coach and to love what you do and be a part of it, but it's another thing to, to build that tree and, and to hope that those branches create other positives and that Zach and Danny and Justin one day will have their own tree and build those branches off of that as well. Hearing from these men and, and what you mean to them, not just as a coach, but as a friend on and off the court, what's your reaction hearing the words from Justin and Zach and Danny and, and hearing what you truly mean to them? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm really touched and, and um, humbled by the fact that, that, that they would take the time to get on and you would put this together and everything. It's really nice. Um, I think, you know, one thing I would say about, about all three of these guys is, um, you know, th they weren't blessed with like overwhelming athletic ability. Dan told his story. Um, you know, Zach overcame a pretty serious knee injury. Um, Justin, I always told him he's built for comfort, not speed, you know? So, um, but I think the fact that these guys had to work really hard as players, um, has kind of put them in a position where they understand how hard they have to work as a coach. And that's why they're all being very successful in that, in that realm, because, um, you know, they all like really, um, maximize their, their God given talents as a player through hard work and, and perseverance and dedication. And I think that's, what's, um, what's translated into their, um, into their coaching careers. And I also have really selfish reasons for, for wanting to see them do well, as I've told all three of them, um, you know, I'm not getting any younger. So one of these guys needs to make it to the big time pretty soon so that my <laughs> retirement gig I already have planned out. I'm going to go with whichever one makes it to the big time first. I'm going as the consultant, like, you know, Tom Murphy, the old Hamilton coach did with Billy Cohen at Northeastern. So, um, you know, that's my career goal to, you know, to be a consultant when one of these guys makes the big time. But, uh, um, you know, I'm super proud of all three of them and super proud of, you know, I've got other guys that have played for me that are high school coaches, AU coaches, junior high, community teams, all that kind of thing. So I think, you know, anytime at any level that, um, you know, guys that came through your program and have played for you or, or, or worked for you or both, um, anytime they can give back and, and um, you know, try to help other young people become better, um, better players, but most importantly, better, better young people, better young men. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's something that's really meaningful to me. And I'm, I'm like super proud and, um, you know, super happy for, for these guys and, and their success. Dave, what's the, what's the greatest thing you've learned as a coach? Um, I think, you know, we talked about this a little bit on the air. I, I think it's that you got to stay true to yourself. Um, you know, true to your, and be able to look in the mirror, stay true to yourself and, and know that you're true to your values and what you believe in and everything. Um, and not try to be someone other than that. Um, you know, be the best, like, um, you know, Dan and, and Justin and Zach, they're, you know, they're all being the best version of themselves. They're not trying to be me or Jim Beheim or, or, you know, Bob McKinney, you know, is a great high school coach that Justin played for, you know, they're, they're trying to be the best versions of themselves. And I think that's, you know, at the end of the day, um, that will carry you the farthest and staying true to the, true to that and true to what you believe in as a, as a coach and as a, um, like mentor to young people. Danny, what would you say is the single greatest thing that, that Dave taught you? I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to narrow it down to one, but it's um, kind of to piggyback off what he was saying is when I talk to my players, um, you know, I try, there's certain instances within practice where I, I have like, you know, what ha would Dave do in this situation times or what has he done in similar situations when I've been around um, and just, you know, that, that coach player relationship and, and being honest. And, um, you know, this year I have, an assistant on my team who is a kid that um, just recently graduated from Brian Stratton and has played for me for two years. And um, so I kind of know the position he's in because I was in that position when I was with Dave. So, um, you know, I just try to carry some of those things over. I don't think there's any one single thing except for, you know, just to be honest with your players. And, and like I said before, have that baseline of respect across the board and, um, and I, I say the same thing to my players that Dave says to his coaches and players that, you know, when basketball is all over, um, you know, 
put me down as a reference, keep in contact with me, you know, because that, the relationships go beyond basketball. And, and I don't think I have, you know, really any bad relationships with past players, whether things ended the way that they wanted to or not. You know, I, I let the door open and I don't burn any bridges. And I think that I get that from Coach Baziak. Zach, you know, you hear Danny talk about not burning any bridges and learning from those moments and now being in a similar situation where you have a former player as an assistant. Now you heard what he had to say about coach. What is the thing when you think about Dave Paziak, what what comes to mind? I know you said you keep in contact every week, sometimes mm-hmm. more than once a week. So what stays in your mind when it comes to Dave? Um. Well, I think a lot of what we've talked about so far, um, the relationships and, um, you know, his commitment to his players, um, all those things definitely, um, you know, definitely still stick out to me. Um, One of the things that I've that I've learned from him, and it's something I, I don't know if he's always done this as a coach, but I know he did it. He's done it at Linden and he's um, I think he started doing it a little bit at OCC was he like practice had no, um, uh, no drills just for drills sake. Everything that he does in practice has a purpose um, and and directly correlates to something that they do in the game. Um, And it was something for me, like when I first got into being a head coach, you know, that every coach you, I was an assistant at three different schools and everyone does things a little bit differently. And, and, um, I always would look at certain things and say, you know, why I wouldn't actually say it out loud, but in my mind, I'd say, why are we doing these things? You know, if, if I don't feel like they necessarily correlate to something that we do as a team. And um, that's one of the things I think that coach Paziak does such a good job of is like making sure that um, everything that they do in practice uh, it directly correlates to something that he does, uh, that his team does in a game. And that's something that I've, that I've picked up from him um, that's like actually a, uh, you know, a, an on-court uh, type of philosophy um, that I think is really important. And I think that that's, that's awesome. And, and playing basketball growing up, and there's a lot of those drills where you say, why, why are we doing this if it doesn't make sense in a game? Yeah. So I can uh, definitely respect that, respect that from Zach. Justin, when you think of Dave Paziak, what is the first thing that comes to mind? I say it on air? <laughs> Whatever you want to say. Listen, we're on the <laughs> internet. There's no FCC here. Oh, okay. um, no, the thing is, I knew I wanted to get into coaching very young. Um, like Dave mentioned, uh, Bob, Bob McKinney, I wanted to, the way that he mentored me when I was young, um, he knew where to push me. Um, and, you know, he pushed me to, to go to OCC because he knew that I'd be in a, in a good place um, in a safe environment and an environment that, that would, you know, help me get to where I wanted to be and also, uh, have someone looking over me, uh, like, like, you know, like Dave does for his players. Um, so, you know, Dave just, he gets a lot out of his guys, but mostly because how much he cares about his guys. He, he truly cares, um, about every player that ever played for him and every coach that ever coached with him. And, you know, there's been, there's places that you can't say that about. And, you know, he, he carried, carried a deep roster when I was at OCC with him and he, uh, it didn't, didn't matter if you were one through 20 or whatever number it was. Um, you knew that he cared about you and that he, whatever he was doing, it was for your benefit. I'm going to stay with you, Justin, on this, either something funny, something that sticks out, something that was maybe off the court when it came to Dave, a moment that didn't have anything to do with basketball. What is it? Ah, uh, didn't it? Well, I'd say the, the, the unnecessary pre uh, camp work speeches of every single day was the same speech, the same, we have to do this and make sure you do this. And I, I worked, three camps every summer for about 10 years. I could, I could read you what he was going to say um, to the point where we started getting the younger guys who started working there to do things just to get Dave's attention. And you could get the commentary out of him to knock it off and do, because you knew how to get under his skin and to set him up to hear those things every morning to make those days a little more fun. But I still think the best, 
locker room speech um, was Del High my freshman year. And they were the number one team in the country. They were a great team. And we actually played a decent half in terms of keeping it close. You know, it wasn't, it was not a, it was a very close game, very competitive game. And, you know, we thought, you know, we're going to come in a half, get back out there and do it again and get, and he came in and what do we practice for? What do we even do? And we were all like, you know, he's, he stood up on the couch and he's yelling down to us and, and we're all didn't know where it came, didn't know where it came from. But uh, that was probably my favorite one of what do we practice for and getting up on the couch and yelling at us. Uh, we didn't know he was that, as nimble as he was. Well, it kind of reminds me, Dave, if you want a rebuttal, it reminds me of when Tom Cruise got up on the couch on the Oprah Winfrey show. It was that was that did that did you channel that? Uh, I don't I didn't see Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise on Oprah. So <laughs> I, I can't correlate to that. So do you remember that moment? Do you remember when you did that with Justin's team? Never happened. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Probably Zach, did happen. Zach, what's your favorite funny or some type of different moment with, with Coach Paziak that maybe didn't happen on the court? Maybe it was in practice. Maybe it was in, in life in general. Something that sticks out to you. Yeah, it's tough to, to think of anything that doesn't have anything to do with basketball because of, of how obsessed with basketball Coach Paziak is. So, uh, and I mean obsessed in a, in a good way for sure. But um, we used to, when I was playing, I don't know if Coach ever thought we did this on purpose, but our team room would go right into like the general locker room. And so Coach Paziak is very like regimented in what he does. So he comes into the thing, he, he comes into the locker room and he counts everybody by twos. And then he checks to make sure that the lock is locked going into, <laughs> going into the general locker room. And at halftime of every game, if we were winning, we would unlock that. Nobody would even go in there. We would just unlock the lock just to see if he would notice. And he noticed it every time for like, however many games we had that season he'd count everybody by twos and then he'd say ah oh, who locked you know somebody locked that door <laughs> like every single I can time second that story I can second <laughs> yeah. that story. and and we were pretty good both years so we were winning quite a bit so it was like you know we would do it at halftime of pretty much every game and he'd come in and and, and say that so Dave did you know that they were unlocking the door no <laughs> well you know now the statute of limitations is over, so <laughs> nothing to worry about, guys. Danny, what's your favorite, maybe, and I know I, I, I would second what Zach says. It's, it's hard to find a non-basketball moment with Dave. Dave has pushed to me repeatedly <clears throat> LeBron James, also the Philadelphia 76ers, and I will fight with him about LeBron and Jordan, and I'm a Raptors fan, but what can you tell me about Dave? Maybe not on the court, some other story, something funny, maybe something that Dave doesn't know now since your statute of limitations are over as well. Yeah. So Justin, you said that couch incident was your first year. I believe so. Yeah. It was so your, was your second year. I'm, yeah. So it would have been my second year there. And I'm almost positive because I remember an incident like that where he's stepped on the couch. I'm pretty sure I was the one that was like, his foot was like right next to my leg when he stood up. I was right underneath him for that speech. But, um, but yeah, no. So now that the statute of limitations is up, I guess I can let you know that it was at basketball camp. So it was still kind of on the court, but me and uh, me and Adrian Hanks were shooting like three quarters court, half court shots during basketball camp. Like kids are running around. It's either really early in the morning. It was like right at the end of camp. And like, we were just chucking basketballs towards the hoop. And, you know, I think I tried to baseball pass one and it completely airballed and coach Paziak was walking underneath the basket and I hit him right in the face. And me and Adrian both quickly turned around and just acted like we were, you know, doing nothing. And then we looked back and he's like holding his nose and we were just like, Oh no. Like, I think we just, you know, bloodied his nose and his face got all watery. I don't think anything was too bad happened, but you could tell he, you know, I mean, he looked up and he wanted to know where it came from and, me and Adrian tried our best to, to hide the face. So hopefully he didn't know it was us. Unfortunately, now he does. So, um, but yeah, that was, that was a scary situation for sure. And I'm sure he brought it up at the, the morning pre, uh, meeting the next day at camp, like uh, Justin um, touched on earlier. Dave, did you know it was them? 
I still hired Dan, so obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. So it's like a Maury Povich show. We're getting everything out right now. Yeah. I'm pick. I'm getting the paper coming in, figuring out who the father is. This is good. So <laughs> the, the final Just piece here, you you guys know uh, rapid fire. Uh, most of you know what we do here. So I'm going to go around here. I'm not going to ask any questions. Let you guys do it. So everybody gets to put coach on the hot seat. Coach, you get to put everybody on the hot seat back. Zach, any question in the world, basketball or not, put coach on the hot seat. Ask him something. Oh, man. Okay. Um, Skip, go to Stern or Danny first. I'll, I'll go next. All right, Stern, go ahead. Uh, I just want to know if you found any place in Vermont that serves good enough garlic wings for your taste. <laughs> Actually... The wings in Vermont are very, very substandard. Um, haven't found garlic. Haven't found good garlic wings. Haven't found particularly good wings in general. I mean, Vermont's got a lot of good stuff. And, you know, the the you know it's known for like maple syrup and cheese and all that, and it's, that stuff's all good. And we got three really good pizza shops in town, but none of them have good wings, unfortunately. Well, as you as you mentioned before, I'm built more for the food court than the basketball court, so. <laughs> I had, I had to know when we come up and visit. Right. Absolutely. Like so, Dave, throw one back to, to Stern. What's your question for him? All right. Since Sterno is built for the food court, all right, um, best, meal, uh, best meal on the road in, your, in, in uh, the two years you played for him? Oh, man. I don't remember the, the place. I just remember – being able to pick from menus like you know everywhere i've been after coaches like to pick what the players are eating and you got to, you just handed us a menu and said keep it under whatever and we'd always tell the freshman yeah you got to keep it under this and get bump our couple dollars up a little bit more too so it, it never seemed to stay under that amount I, I couldn't believe we got to do that so I, I think there was a the best trips we took were up to clinton community college less for the food more because they had that uh that pool with the slide that was a great trip that we used to take uh because they had a water indoor water park and uh we we used to i, I don't I'm remember who, I think it was, yeah so so uh brett leetka shoving the uh the lifeguard in the pool got us in a little hot water but besides that it was uh i think that was our best trip I like it. I like it. Awesome stuff. Danny, go ahead and ask coach and we'll go to Zach at the end here. So when I played uh, before every practice, we did uh, what they called the lucky seven drill. And it was like seven drills to get us kind of warmed up. Do you still do that? Or like, what's like your favorite drill that uh, like have, that you've done like for the past 15, 20 years? Actually, uh, all three of you guys aren't going to believe that, but we retired that. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> We actually did retire that. And it kind of, kind of ties into what Zach said about um, our practices now, almost everything is live. So, um, you know, we, we have uh, I've kind of changed how we structure practice a little bit. So, um, you know, everything is live, but with a, with a focus. So I have not, um, I'll break out a couple of things in that, like, you know, the, like one on two ball handling, stuff like that and, and do it, but in a competitive sense. Um, but like lucky sevens is the first thing in practice we haven't done in a couple of years. Okay. All right, Dave, what's your question for Danny? Um, let me think here. So, uh, cause I know what he's going to answer, but I want to hear his justification. <laughs> uh, Jordan or LeBron and why? <clears throat> uh, well, I, it's hard to explain. I, I just think Jordan's the greatest. He's who I grew up with watching. Um, and I don't know. I just, I, it's nothing against LeBron. Like, I think LeBron's great. I just, I don't know. I just, Jordan's the greatest to me. I don't know what it is. He just like superseded. I don't know. It, I guess LeBron is going to have to show me his acting chops in Space Jam this summer. And we'll, we'll decide after that, maybe. Fair. Okay. Zach, what's your question? All right, so this is not a great question, but if you had to bet all the money you have, are we going to have a regular season next year? Like a 25 game, no mask, no nothing crazy, just a normal season next year. College bat, you mean our level, Division Three college basketball? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be the optimist and say yes. All right. 
right. I like that. What's your question? And, and I hope that we do. What's your question for Zach, coach? Uh, question for Zach. All right. Uh, best you know, of all your coaching, all your coaching experiences, you know, working with me and, you know, working at LeMoyne and Shepard and um, being a head coach and everything. Best destination you ever took a team to or, or as a, as a player or a coach, best, like best destin basketball destination trip. So the best destination, we played a tournament at Florida national. So we went down to Miami, uh, my uh, third year at LeMoyne or uh, third year at Delhi. I'm sorry. Um, that was the best destination in terms of just like going to the beach and things like that. Um, the, actually the trip, the Florida trip, um, at OCC was pretty awesome too with the, the two times that we went the best destination in terms of like atmosphere for a game, uh, was West Liberty when I was at Shepherd. Um, they press you all game and it's like nothing you've ever experienced. Like other teams press, but somehow the way they do it is just different. And the atmosphere at their games is it's electric. Um, their coaches since moved on to another school, but, um, the atmosphere at that, at their games, it, like it was so overwhelming. You felt like they were playing with 10 guys on the court. Um, so I would say that from a basketball perspective, that was the the coolest destination to, to play at. So with that being said, Dave Paziak, our tribute to him today, not knowing that his coaching tree was going to be here on Wake Up Call. You could check out Dave with Linden Men's Basketball, NVU, Linden in Vermont. Of course, Danny Frasina here in our community with Brian and Stratton, Syracuse Men's Basketball, Justin Stern with Casanova College's Men's Basketball team, and of course, Zach Thompson with SUNY Delhi's Men's Basketball. Gentlemen, thank you for making this possible. Thank you for keeping the surprise a secret. And Dave, thank you for all that you've done for our community, as well as for these men. Well, Dan, I really, really appreciate you putting this together. And, um, you know, Justin and Dan and Zach, I you know, appreciate you guys taking the time out. And uh, it's been awesome to get on the call with you guys and, and connect virtually. And hopefully we'll be able to, uh, you know, get together in person sometime soon. Absolutely. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it all. And, uh, and Zach, you're going to have to add me to the uh, to the list for dinner as well, because at this point, I think I, I I'm, I'm Dave's plus one for this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Yeah, we can All do right. that. Gentlemen, take care. Stay safe. We'll talk soon. Thanks. Congrats, coach. Thank you. Thanks, Congrats. guys. Congrats, coach. Really appreciate it.